thank you for having us and my name is Diane and I am Karen's oldest sister and my story about Karen is going to be about Karen before the hundred plus women okay Karen is the fifth out of 12 children and she was our leader at all times and we were a team of course coming from 12 children and so whenever we would get together it was always going to be if she wanted to have something to say we're going to have lunch and that meant that we were going to have a meeting about something she was going to organize she wanted us involved so we were always a part of her group and her ideas and so that's why the hundred plus women couldn't help but be a success because Karen w was a great team player and that's what it takes. Thank you for coming. Hello ladies. I'm Jane Uhila. I'm Karen's sister. And um, I just wanted to tell you a little story about Karen. Uh, in the last few days with Karen, um, she had asked uh, my sisters and I to take over 100 women. And I said, oh, Karen, I don't know if I can do it. And she goes, you can do it. It's so simple. It's so easy. All the ladies will love it. You'll have the best time. And I thought, oh, all right. I guess we can do it then. And so um, I just want to say, um, as Karen would say, uh, welcome, ladies, and thank you for being here. And I'd like to thank Gina and her board for inviting us to tell Karen's story. As you know, um, my sister Karen started... 100 Women Who Care in 2006. And growing up with a family of 12 kids, as Diane said, we all had to learn our own strengths, and if for no other reason than to survive the dinner table. I always thought I knew my own strengths, but my sister Karen showed me I have even more strength, like speaking to a large group of women here. But one of Karen's strengths was her refusal to say no and take no for an answer. So when she was facing the end of her life and she asked us to continue her legacy of 100 plus women, we just possibly could not say no. She forced us to step outside our comfort zone and to take on responsibility of keeping her vision alive. And here we thought we were just simple sisters of hers and own our own businesses. But we both, both were learning the value of Karen's vision. And even though this is all new to us, we are committed to making Karen proud of us and helping communities together and thrive. People who knew Karen would call her a strong woman. One of her greatest strengths was her belief that everyone deserves a chance. Everyone has something to offer and something of value. Whether you come from a good home, were given opportunities, or grew up with a little hope for a better life, Karen knew that as an adult, you have a choice to give your talents or give up. And Karen knew also that each of us can use a helping hand and that at some point we all have our struggles and as women we owe it to each other to do what we can for others and each other. Karen was always involved in the community. The list of the organizations she worked with or sat on boards was very long. She always found it interesting that one of her greatest ideas was born from a simple, so simple, so basic that most of us took for granted and it all started with baby beds. It started with a lady asking her for money for baby beds. One phone call began a movement. A woman calls Karen saying that the infant mortality rate in our community is rising because new mothers can't afford baby beds. Karen asked a few questions and quickly realized that this woman who was passionate about her need was unprepared for the conversation. So typical in Karen's fashion, she said, Get your facts, get your numbers, call me back when you're better prepared. And she always said that. The woman probably thought she would never hear from Karen again, but she had no idea that one phone call would do. Karen started thinking about the need in the community, and she knew there had to be a way to make it happen. The idea was born. With all the involvement in the community, Karen had to know 100 women that could give $100. She began making phone calls, scheduled a family, or I'm sorry, scheduled a meeting. At that first meeting in one hour, Karen's groups of friends heard the story, wrote their checks, and Karen presented the Center for Family Health with a $12,800 check, the first meeting. She founded 100 Women Who Care. I know, isn't that awesome? 
Right then and there, she asked the women, do you want to have this? Do you want to have it four times a year? We could do it. Any member, you want to do it? Everybody raised their hand. They wanted to do it. Any member could, could present in the community anything they wanted, she said. It just had to be a worthy cause. In the immediate need, she said. Karen's baby grew. There are now over 268 worldwide chapters. Karen's chapter has raised over $700,000. Patty and I, we know our own strengths, and Diane, it was the sport from our community that compels us to give back and strengthen to lift each other's up and give them strength. Karen liked to keep it personal. As we all know, whoever knew her, she always wanted to keep it personal, even though she wanted to help others all the time. Her involvement ranged from cooking a meal, sharing with friends, raising tens of thousands of dollars for her community. And at every level of giving and nothing in between, she always met. If you ever have met Karen, you might be painting a picture in your mind, a picture of a warm, loving, generous woman, a motherly type. You'd be wrong. She could be that at times, but Karen also moved in the world largely dominated by men. She learned at a young age to be tough, whether as the mayor of our town in Jackson or a successful driven businesswoman in the real estate industry. As a community leader, Karen knew how to be tough and when to do it. Even as a sister, she didn't put up with whining or feeling sorry for herself. If I went to Karen with the problem, she would listen, give advice, and then she'd say, okay, that's enough feeling sorry for yourself. She had no patience dwelling on your problems, only finding solutions. She applied that to every aspect of her life and even at her death. I'm going to pass the mic over to Patty. <laughs> Karen was a woman that wanted to move the world, and she wanted other women to move it with her. It wasn't just about her agenda. It was about taking one woman, gathering in with many women, and changing the world. So your $100 goes a long, long way. It's not just about the $100. It's about the hundreds of dollars that you put together and change your community. It's about making a difference. It's about putting your hand down and holding someone else's hand and rising them above the situation they're in. That's what the 100 women are about. Keep it simple, make it work, help your community, rise above, it's not about our egos, it's about what we can do for others. On Valentine's Day in 2014, Karen didn't feel well. She went to the doctor, she had some tests. The doctor said, I can give you and tell you what's wrong now. She goes, no, I'm a single woman. I have no children. I would like to gather my 11 brothers and sisters so that we can all hear the news at the same time so we're all on the same page so that we all know what's going on. The doctor says, well, you know those HIPAA laws. Karen says, we don't really worry about HIPAA laws. We don't really care about them. <laughs> she said, you know, we're a family of 12 and we want to know all at the same time. So they took us, and the oncology department was not ready for us, that's for sure. They tried to find a waiting room for us, no such luck, not enough chairs. Karen said, we're going to need a bigger room. They said, okay. So they moved us to another area. They tried to cover the windows. Karen said, it's okay, I'm good with it, you know, we're fine. We all sat together, the doctor came in, she was a young woman. She sat down beside Karen. I sat on the other side of Karen. Jane was on the other side. You could see the woman tearing up as she looked around at those 12 faces. She said, Karen, this is the worst possible news that you can ever give someone. And she said, you have the type of cancer no one survives, biliary tree cancer. We all cried. We said, I patted the doctor on the shoulder and I told her, it's okay. We just want to know what we can do to help Karen to facilitate this disease. We are a family of faith. It's all right. We want you to help us so that we can help Karen on this journey. She's like, oh my gosh. She goes, thank you so much. She goes, it's such a burden to have to give that news to anyone. Karen told us, ask questions. Anybody's free in the room. Ask questions, you know, whatever you want, ask her. We asked all kinds of questions. Does she have six months? No. Does she have three months? No. 
Does she have weeks? Maybe. Does she have days? A few. She suggested us to do what we wanted. She told Karen, eat, drink, see whoever you want, do whatever you want, enjoy yourself. Don't hold back. Karen says, that's great. That's what I'm going to do. She was lucky. She got to stay at home for a few weeks, and then we went to the hospice house. They, too, were not prepared for a family of almost 100 in the immediate group. <laughs> they wanted to throw us out, but there was nowhere to throw us. And there was too many of us. So we stayed by her side. And at the end, it was truly remarkable, all the women that came to see Karen and all the 100 women chapters that sent notes, sent videos, came to share their story about the 100 women with Karen. And it was a funny thing. At the end, Karen said, boy, I wish I had more money. Boy, I wish I had a better car. Boy, I wish I had a better house. No, nope. it was all about the people that surrounded her and right to the end, that she was so overwhelmed by the love and all the joy she got from creating the 100 women. And even being the mayor of our town and being a successful businesswoman did not compare to the way the 100 women have changed the world in a very positive way, and we saw that in Chicago. Our family was moved to tears by her success we were happy to hold her hand. We were happy to walk with her, just as you women today show, just by gathering your strength and your legacy that you have carried on Karen's legacy by every time you meet as 100 women. For us as individuals, it's about changing the world, and that's who we are as women, and that's who Karen was as a woman. She was strong. She was formidable. She believed. Thank you all very much. Enjoyed our moment.